Steve's Game Blog. I said this before, and I'll say it again. Natural Selection 2 is hard. Its FPS RTS blend has more of a learning cliff face than a curve. Space Marine Frontiersmen are relatively easy to figure out for anyone who's ever played an FPS, but the Alien Kara are a completely different story. The melee oriented aliens have five unique life forms that they can evolve to, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. This can be a bit overwhelming for new players, so today I'm having a look at what each life form can do. Oh, and before we start, press your F key whenever you're using any life form. It'll give you the neat alien night vision that I'm using in most of this video. So, let's start with the Skulk. The Skulk is the Kara's bread and butter. Every respawning alien will start off as a Skulk and only evolve to a new life form if they have enough resources. Oh so God, it's a life form that most people will be spending the majority of their time as. The first thing you should know about being a Skulk is they're extremely weak. Starting at just 70 HP, a single burst from a Marine's LMG will kill you if they spot you at range. The solution? Don't attack from range. Your strength as a Skulk is that you are fast and you are small. You can climb up walls and scramble through vents. Use this to your advantage. Basically, you don't want Marines to see you until you are literally in their face. The Skulk's secondary attack is Parasite, a ranged attack that does a small amount of damage and plants a Parasite on a targeted Marine. Alien players can track the Parasited Marine through walls via its yellow silhouette. Two other abilities, Leap and Xenocide, must first be researched by a commander before you can use them. Leap allows you to leap through the air, handy for covering distances quickly, while Xenocide will turn you into a suicide bomber. Every life form can evolve an array of traits, provided the commander has researched them. For the Skulk, I recommend taking Carapace for the extra armor, Celerity to enhance your speed, and Camouflage so you can make these stealth ambushes like this. Okay, now let's talk about the Gorge. The Gorge has changed a bit from its NS1 counterpart, moving from the alien's primary builder to a type of support slash defensive life form. What you want to be doing as a Gorge is supporting your team by building clogs to block passageways, hydras to protect expansions, and using a heal spray to heal allies. The build menu is accessed by pressing the 2 key, and you can use a heal spray by holding mouse 2. Remember that your heal spray can also heal buildings as well as make them build faster. The Gorge is a little slow and you can't climb walls, so be very careful when following your allies into battle. If you have to retreat, you might get left behind your faster brethren. What you can do, however, is perform a belly slide by hitting the shift key. It gives you a little movement boost. The commander can research just one ability for the Gorge, the Bio Bomb. Bio Bomb turns you from a defensive heal bot into an offensive siege cannon. It deals massive damage to structures and is ranged. Late game, you'll want to Bio Bomb key structures, such as power nodes, while your allies keep the marines busy. I recommend taking Adrenaline for the extra energy, Camouflage so you can feebly attempt to hide, and Carapace, which might let you survive just long enough to barely slide away. Now let's look at the Lurk. The Lurk was one of the hardest classes for me to get the hang of. You can fly by tapping the spacebar to rise and holding it to glide. You can cling to walls and ceilings by holding the shift key, and this is something you want to get used to. The Lurk's Mouse 2 is a pinpoint accurate needle-like ranged attack and what you'll probably be using as your primary form of attack. You basically want to hide yourself somewhere up in the rafters and then wheel down on clueless marines HP as they frantically search for you and then use your fast flying speed to get out of there when they spot you. Use your primary bite attack only in dire straits as you are quite a weak class second only to the Skulk. The commander can research spores and umbra for you. Using spores spawns a damaging poison cloud at your location. This is best utilized by doing a fly-through through a marine base or a group of marines, spamming a long trail of poison clouds as you go. Umbra disintegrates one out of every two bullets fired into it. It's a complicated way of saying it's a defensive buff for your team, and late game you want to spam it on your own missiles and gorges. I recommend Adrenaline, as flying cost energy, Silence, so the marines takes longer to find you, and Carapace, as usual, for the extra armor. Next up is the Fade. The Fade is the closest thing to an Assassin class that the car have. He has a high resource cost of 50 res, and while he does have a bit more health in the Gorge and the Lurk, he's still quite fragile, so it's often a source of frustration for new players that spend all their precious res on him and then they just die with two well-placed shotgun blasts. First off, do not evolve to a Fade unless your commander has researched Blink. Blink is the key ability of the Fade and what you will use for the majority of his movement. I mean, you have Shadow Step bound to the Shift key, but it's basically a crappier version of Blink that won't save you the way that Blink will. Blink phases you out of the physical world and allows you to move extremely rapidly across the map. 
Use this to quickly blink up to low marines, take them out, and then blink out. You can also blink at the bases, do some damage, and then blink out when they realize what's happening. Fades of Blink are the most mobile life form in the game. Use this to harass locations in different areas of the map in order to make the marines spread their defenses thin. Blink, blink, blink. The second ability the commander can research for you is Vortex. It's kind of a rarity. It's usually the last thing researched because it costs a lot and it has a pretty situational use. I mean, you can use it to trap marines in stasis where they can't take or deal damage. Um, as Blink is your primary source of movement, take Adrenaline. Uh, take Camouflage so you can hide after retreating and take Regeneration so you can keep coming back for hit and runs. Now it's time to look at the Onos. The Onos is the most iconic life form in the game, playing the role of the Look at me, I'm a big fucking gorilla thing with a horn, I'm gonna go you to shit with it. The first thing you should know is that as an Onos, you are not invincible. Many people feel that after blowing a whopping 75 res on a life form, they can just waltz right through the entire enemy team. Concentrated fire will kick your ass, especially if they have jetpacks. Instead, the Onos philosophy is to always retreat with plenty of health left to spare. And always try to work in groups, either with other Onoses or Gorges. One or two Gorges spamming their heal spray on you makes you quite hard to kill. The Onos can charge by holding the shift key. This costs quite a bit of energy to use, so you shouldn't be spamming it unless you need to catch a retreating marine or make a hasty escape. The commander can also reach a stomp, which will let you perform a, a shock wave causing stomp that will stun grounded marines and disrupt sentries. It has no effect on your greatest nemesis though, jetpacking marines. For uh, traits, I recommend Celerity, uh, as it helps enhance your mobility and allow you to escape, and Camouflage, as Surprise Onos is the best way to make Marines shit their pants. As for defensive upgrades, it's a bit of a toss-up. Previously, Carapace was the go-to choice, but Regeneration has recently had a substantial buff that makes you almost unkillable as long as you can retreat with enough health. Go with Regeneration until they nerf it. So there you go. While by no means an exhaustive guide, this guide will help you get the basics of the five different life forms that the car have and hopefully make you a better player. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Um, check out my blog and also my work over at Nonfiction Gaming for more content like this. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks.